Hey, what's up everybody? Ricky Carruth here. So the question is, is will the real estate market crash? How hard will it crash? And what's going to happen? So I have some data here that I want to share with you, some brand new data that shows that we quite possibly could be in the beginning stages of the next real estate surge. Yeah, not crash, but surge, another surge. So I feel like this is extremely interesting. And today I want to dive into this data with you uh, and share that with you and get your thoughts. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this because there's so many people out there that feel like this thing is going to crash and burn, but yet it hasn't crashed and burned. Yes, we've seen a softening of prices. We've seen transactions come way down, uh, but that is compared to a year that was really a banner year something that was more of an outlier, something that was just out of the norm, if you will, where we had over 6 million transactions in 2021. And then we had, uh, you know, prices where people were paying 50,000, 100,000 more than what the seller was asking. That is just absolutely abnormal. And anything compared to that year, let's just say it doesn't really count. But that's what's happening, and that's what the media is portraying is all this stuff. And if you look at, uh, you know, for example, the stat and sometimes the, the headlines that we see about foreclosures. So foreclosures are up 150%. Yeah, they're up 150% from basically zero. You know, it went from three to, you know, six, uh, whatever the case may be. We don't see, we're not seeing a massive, we're not even halfway back to where we were foreclosure-wise um, pre-pandemic, not even half of the foreclosures. And we're not going to see that massive wave of foreclosures because people have so much equity in their houses. They could just sell their house and make money on it if they got into trouble. Um, and that doesn't go for everyone. Sure, there is a small percentage, a very small percentage of people who uh, are probably underwater because prices have come down. And those, more than likely, are the FHA and VA buyers that bought at the peak. And just keep in mind who those buyers are. They're people who put 3%, 3.5% down on a house they do not plan on selling. And they're in a very low interest rate. Those loans have very low interest rates. So when they bought that house, they had no intentions of selling it whatsoever. Um, they were you know, overqualified for the loan. And just because prices come down a little bit doesn't mean that they're going to be in trouble. Um, so it's, it's very interesting to see that foreclosure outlook and kind of what's on the horizon, because honestly, that's like the last thing the bears are hanging on to. There's going to be a massive wave of layoffs. that's going to lead to foreclosures. Um, but that's really, the data does not show that that's not where we are, but, um, this piece is very interesting because we're going to see this happening in stages. And, you know, let me just, as a disclosure, say that, I don't believe we're going to have a surge like we had, of course, but I'm already getting messages from agents telling me that they're getting multiple offers. They're getting, you know, 10, 20, 30 showings on new listings. I'm already seeing that in my comments and in my DMs of agents telling me this. And that's exactly what I was seeing is agents commenting and DM these type of things um, back pre-pandemic. And so the market was heating up pre-pandemic, right? Inventory was shrinking Prices were, were, were moving up quite quickly, and we were seeing that surge already pre-pandemic. And then as the, uh, you know, as the pandemic happened and then stimulus happened, um, we saw that massive surge. So that's kind of things were already happening, but I was getting those messages before that. And I, I'm seeing the same messages now. And so the, the stat that I find very interesting is from Redfin. And we can go here to the article. The article says, the headline is, Redfin Report sales are slow to kick off the new year, but more buyers are starting to search, right? They're, start, they're starting to search. And so what we see when we read into this article, you know, it shows some things, some, some down numbers, pending home sales drop 32% year over year. Um, so on and so forth. We know all those numbers, but the stat that is very interesting, if you scroll down, uh, let's find it here. Uh, right here. Google searches for homes for sale were up nearly 50% from their November lows, right? During the week ending January 7th. So 
between the November lows of this search term and January 7th, they increased 50%. Okay, now what does that tell us? That tells us that as interest rates are, are inching down, right, today I looked at rates, there were 6.09 for a 30-year fixed. So they're continuing to come down with inflation, and we're seeing that number continue to drop, and it may fluctuate a little bit up, but we're going to see the trend down. And as we see it drop, right, we're going to see another stage, another group of buyers enter the market because they're just sitting on the sideline. They're waiting on interest rates to hit a certain number so that they can get back in the game. They're just sitting there waiting. And so right now we're seeing 50% more buyers searching for houses for sale online. And now that's the first stage, right? That hasn't translated into closings and pending deals and, and all that stuff yet. But that's what's coming next. As interest rates continue to come down, we're going to see that next stage where buyer that translates into buyers actually looking at houses, right? Where um, they're going to be getting shown houses physically. So right now we're in the searching stage, then we're going to see buyers actually looking at houses. Then we're going to see that uptick in mortgage applications. You know, I'm getting comments right now. Oh, but, you know, if if this thing's turning around, then why aren't mortgage applications? Why are mortgage applications down so much? It's because this thing doesn't happen all at once, ladies and gentlemen. It happens in stages. And so when we get to that stage, we'll see that uptick in mortgage applications. Then that will be preceded by an uptick in pending deals. And just like uh, last year in 2022, the media was saying, oh, we're up 160% foreclosures. We're going to see that type of data for pending deals. Since pending deals were here down 32%, okay, that's, you know, last year was very low compared to the year before. It's actually an average year. But we're going to see an uptick, and, and we're going to see those headlines. Well, we probably won't see the headlines, right? You'll probably have to come to my channel to see the actual headlines of the positive data. But what we'll see is, is we'll see an uptick in pending deals, right? Then we'll see an uptick in transactions compared to last year. This is all going to happen in stages. This is going to take many, many months to get from A to B, which is the closed deal, and many stages in between, but that's what we're seeing, right? And it's, it wasn't hard to see that this is what was going to start to happen. It's not hard to see where this is going, ladies and gentlemen. So I want you to be 100 million percent prepared, whether you're a real estate agent, whether you are a real estate agent, um, whatever it is that you do in the industry, you know, I just want to give you my thoughts on where I see. Now, what's great is, is, okay, we can look at this and we can say, okay, this is what we feel certain is going to happen. So let's create a game plan around what we feel is certain gonna, certainly going to happen. But the great thing is, is that we know in our mind, we're prepared for worst case scenario over here. Over here in Ricky's world, we're prepared for worst case scenario. If prices drop 50%, that's Fine with us because now real estate's so on sale, we could go sell to anyone. Anybody's going to buy a house for fifty percent off. Yeah, great. That's that's awesome. If we're an investor, we're buying things fifty percent off. Um, so that's exciting. If that were to happen, isn't it? Is it? Is it exciting? You know, in that scenario that people are going to be getting laid off and foreclosures and all that. No, that part of this is not exciting. So let me be very clear. But what is exciting is the prospects of business opportunities that will be happening during that time, right? And so that's what I'm going to be excited about is the prospects of business opportunities, right? To, to be more successful to where I can create more and be able to give more, right? And be able to help more people, you know, and provide an incredible life for my family. That's what it's all about, helping others. I digress. Back to the market. This is what I'm seeing happening in the market. This is what I'm excited about in the market. Listen, again, if it doesn't happen, great. But if it does, prepare. Let's prepare now for both cases. Um, and if you're a bear, if you think this is going to crash harder than 2008, still, 
after all the data and, and everything that's happened, right? I know a lot of you that are bears probably think that it, it was already going to crash. You probably guys are probably saying like November, December, it's going to crash. Some of you are saying mid 2023. And so I'm still with you on that. But please, in the comments, let me know exactly what data you're looking at that points to that scenario, because I would love to see it. I did a video last week. It was called prepare for the upcut for the for the what was it? It was prepare for the worst real estate crash that we've ever seen. And a lot of people thought that was clickbait. It wasn't clickbait. I was I literally told you how to prepare for the worst real estate market crash we've ever seen if it in fact happens. I wasn't saying that, you know, a real estate crash was going to happen. I'm saying the exact opposite. But what it was is a video to put you in the mindset that if the crash happens, that you're 100% prepared. And if it doesn't happen, you're over-prepared. That's my job, is to make sure you're over-prepared and ready for anything. So you can go out there and crush it no matter what happens in the market. We know that closings are going to happen every single day of our life, no matter what happens. So with that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I'm going to link that video, prepare for the worst real estate market crash you've ever seen, right here and go enjoy that and let me know if there's anything else in the world i can do for you have a great rest of your day i want to i want look i35 with the top down quit to tell a hater they should get like